Welcome to Ag Research's MB Dairy Sheep Program presentation around the lessons that we've learned on co-innovation. Uh, we're aware that some people who were planning on being here today are experiencing some IT troubles, uh, but thank you very much for those of you who were able to, who are able to join us live. Uh, please feel free to ask questions as we go. Uh, there are some there's a chat function off to the side that you'll see, and your host for today is Tessa Mills. Tessa is a government sector, the Ag Research Government Sector Account Manager, and she's located in Palmerston North. And I'll hand over to you, Tessa. There you go, when you're ready. Kia ora koutou. Thanks very much for joining us today. It's my pleasure to be your facilitator. We're going to be hearing a bit more about a recently completed research program on the dairy sheep industry in New Zealand. It's been a really challenging program. Um, it has had a high level of stakeholder interest and has been industry led through co-innovation. So first off, we're going to hear from Linda Samuelson, the science lead on this program of work, and she's going to be followed up by a presentation by Roxanne Henwood, a social scientist who's going to talk through the assessment of the co-innovation approach we used in this research program. As Jenna suggested, we do have opportunities for Q&A at the end of the seminar, so we'd encourage you to use the chat function to take part in that. Um, so with that short introduction, I'd like to pass over to Linda Samuelson for the first part of the presentation. Thank you very much. Tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, thanks, it's great to be here. Um, uh, I would like to start this presentation um, by providing a bit of funding context for this research program entitled Boosting Exports of the Emerging New Zealand Dairy Sheep Industry, uh, which I had the privilege to lead for six years. Um, since this program was funded in 2013, oh, um, yeah, the funding context was just a little bit different back then. Um, so this slide just is just to, to um, give you a bit of background about that. All right, uh, let's move to the overview of the program. So we have here at the top of this slide in red, we've got um, the post contract outcomes. And under that, we've got our um, impact statement. And beneath that, um, we have the four research aims of the program, uh, which was uh, they were completely integrated on and off farm research and were investigating things such as milk composition health benefits of sheep milk, environmental footprint of sheep dairying, and how we can increase milk production. So um, to deliver this research, we partnered up with uh, a number of New Zealand research organisations and also with several New Zealand sheep milk producers. So um, conducting this research to support the industry came with uh, some challenges. So first of all, back in 2013, this industry um, on average had very low producing animals, so that was a challenge. The other challenge, which is actually also an opportunity, is that the, the knowledge base on New Zealand sheep dairying and sheep milk was yeah very low. So we effectively had to start from scratch. Um, other challenges that we faced were that the industry was pretty fragmented at this stage, which I think is pretty typical of an emerging industry. And there was really no experience uh, within industry of working together. Um, in addition, there was little or no um, experience being involved in research and having sort of that understanding how research needs to be conducted. And an additional thing there was the constantly changing nature of, the, of this emerging industry. Uh, you know what types of products they were producing, what their priorities were, and so forth. So uh, to overcome these challenges, we used a co-innovation approach. And this uh, approach was not just about integrating the on and off farm science, um, but also to uh, really uh, involve uh, our research partners. And last but not least, to work very closely with industry to make sure that the research we're, we're doing was relevant for them. So a lot of effort here was 
um, was spent on building trust and that involved a lot of listening to industry to understand their problems and issues and understand where they were going. Another big part was to try and introduce a culture of openness and sharing among industry and foster a, a New Zealand Inc attitude. And last but not least, uh, another important role was to educate the industry about what it's like to conduct uh, research and development. So uh, before I hand over to Roxanne to talk about how we evaluated our co-innovation approach, we're going to watch a video which uh, highlights the impacts of our research um, and also um, shows why this research program um, received the 2019 AgriSearch Impact Prize and also actually a gold star rating from MB. Okay, it'll just take me a minute to get the video sorted. The aim of the program was to support the emerging New Zealand dairy sheep industry and help them increase their exports. And we've done that through uh, conducting research both on farm and off farm. Uh, for instance, helping them to increase uh, milk production on farm uh, and also looking at the environmental footprint of sheep dairying and looking at the composition and health benefits of the sheep milk. I got involved in this project right at the start. Uh, we decided that it needed to be a multidisciplinary program um, because we were going to have to, with a new industry, we we're going to have to cover so many bases to try and meet the challenge that we were given to grow an industry from nothing to $250 million value um, by 2020. My role in the project was with an objective one of the program, which was composition and processing. My role was to go out to the producer partners farms and collect individual sheep milk to see what variety of composition we had within the New Zealand dairy sheep genetics. It's my role also then to bring those samples back and coordinate sending samples out to our collaborator investigators at Otago and at Callaghan and Ferrier Institute and our own labs and occasionally commercial labs as well. This collaboration has been successful because we invested a lot of time, particularly in the beginning of the program, uh, to build relationships and establish trust. Um, this is a large program and we've got, uh, I think, around about 50 scientists involved from four different research providers. And we've got three industry partners. So uh, there's a wide range of different people with different knowledge, different um, backgrounds, different perspectives. And um, it was really important for us to early on in the program, try to understand each other's different perspectives and get to know each other. We've had both economic, social and environmental impact. And if we start with the economic impact, um, since 2013, when the program started, export volumes from this industry have increased by 40% and the export value by nearly 80%. And of that, it's estimated that this program has contributed about $4 million per annum. And that's quite a lot, considering that the total export value from this industry is currently about $23 million. In terms of environmental impact, uh, we've collected data in this program, and that data um, shows that sheep dairying likely has a lower environmental impact than bovine dairy. And in terms of the social impact, we've been uh, really important in bringing the industry together. And this has resulted in uh, the industry being open and sharing information, also for the industry to work together and co-invest in research. The personal highlights for me have been around the teamwork that's gone into the program and uh, about the connection with industry. With the teamwork, for example, we've been able to link things like the feeding system with actually the taste properties of, of New Zealand milk and that's going to be a real advantage to us in the future in terms of that uh, grass-fed program that we have in New Zealand, the advantage that we've got. And then the other 
real highlight has been working with the industry, and I think a really good example of that has been the work that we've done with lamb rearing. And the results there that we've produced have been done directly in uh, consultation and on, the, uh, on our partner farms. And that research has basically been taken up almost before we finished it, been moulded into something practical. Working with industry partners for me was very much involved with the farm staff involved in each of the producer farms. It, my job was impossible without the dairy staff who were down either in the herringbone or at the rotary assisting with actually the collecting of the milk. My role was really to interact with them so I didn't disrupt the actual commercial milking. Well I did but not as, as very little as possible but it, that the quality of the sample was maintained and that was the most important thing for me from my research side. But the dairy staff were always very generous with their time and they were really enthusiastic to be part of the program. Well, for me, there's been two main highlights. The first one is um, the shift in attitude within the industry from in 2013, barely wanting to be in the same room as other producers and to the situation that we have now with a, um, a New Zealand Inc attitude, uh, an atmosphere, an attitude of, of openness and sharing and collaboration, um, uh, particularly around science, you know, co-investment in science. Um, the other highlight has been the, that we've been able to implement so much of our research already uh, with the industry. The potential for the sheep milk industry is absolutely enormous right at the moment. Um, we've worked through some of the figures. We were given the $250 million challenge. We think by 2035, we'll have a quarter of a million ewes uh, producing or returning something like $1.5 billion to the industry, to, to New Zealand's bottom line. Um, it's, it's going to be absolutely enormous because of, specifically because of the fact that we are pitching the products, new products to next generation consumers. We're not dwelling in the past with products like cheese. We're moving on. The sheep dairy uh, program run by Ag Research has had a massive impact on the industry. It's really given us the confidence to shape our farm systems, to understand our milk. Uh, it's shaped our product portfolio as an industry around what products New Zealand can make, how we can highlight the benefits of sheep milk to a global audience. And I think particularly uh, really given the industry the confidence to expand and go forward. Building on the sheep dairy program, Spring Sheep is looking to extend some of the trials, particularly at the farm systems end of the program with our primary growth partnership. We'll take what's been done with ag research at the sort of the laboratory scale or the clinical scale, and we'll expand that to a farm system trial. So that's scaling up uh, some of the lamb rearing projects, some of the feeding projects, looking at different uh, farming systems and really putting them into a commercial context and scaling them out. So that'll be a huge bit of work and really beneficial for the industry. The team's absolutely thrilled to win this impact award and really our focus right from the beginning has been about industry relevant research and doing uh, what the industry needs. So uh, we're, we're absolutely thrilled about this prize. It's really a testament to all the hard work that everyone has put in, particularly in terms of building that relationship with the industry. We're going to use the price money um, in the spirit of the program, which is about sharing information. We've got three small projects lined up. One of them is about sharing more information with the industry and also the general public to showcase how science can uh, uh, support an emerging industry. Uh, the second project uh, is about showing how this industry has changed during these six years and that will be in a form of a review article. The third project, we're going to take all the learnings from working in a large interdisciplinary program like this with multiple uh, organisations and industry partners involved and share those learnings within AgResearch.
Okay, over to you, Roxanne. Math mute. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Jenna. Um, so I'm Roxanne Henwood. I'm a research associate in the People and Agriculture team at Ag Research. I do social science work. And I was tasked with collecting some of those lessons on co-innovation that were mentioned at the end of the video. So to do this, I used semi-structured interviews. I interviewed um, nine people involved in the project from Ag Research, collaborating research institutes, and also industry. And they were in a mixture of roles, some in leadership roles and some more in hands-on science or farm staff roles. I asked them about key events in the program and how they were for them, as well as success factors and challenges that they encountered as they worked through the program. These interviews were transcribed and then I did some thematic analysis looking for key ideas across the interviews, what was the same, what was different. So my key findings included these success factors that I'll um, tell you a bit more about in the next slides. So a really prominent theme that came through as far as success factors goes was communication that built relationship and trust. So this was often characterized as being regular, transparent where everyone knew what was happening, personalized based on what individuals preferred for communication and face to face particularly when it came to resolving conflicts. Related to this, there was seen to be value in having regular time for connections between researchers and partners, like their twice yearly gatherings for project team members and industry partners. One of the interviewees described um, some of the value of those days in these quotes, talking about how data would be presented in those sessions, but then there was the opportunity to connect that with what had happened on the farm, um, talking to the producers, as well as um, bringing just greater connection between the people involved in the project. Another success factor was having a strong farmer focus. One interviewee put it this way, I think a key thing supporting the success of the project was the whole formula of having scientists and industry, and actually we were trying to deliver something that really applied a value to the farmers. That actually made a lot of difference. So this began prior to planning, where there was a meeting with potential industry stakeholders before a proposal was written and submitted. It was also done throughout the process as there were these regular meetings with industry to look at what had been done so far and what research was needed in the coming um, seasons. And this was also allowed by the funder. So for this project, Ag Research was able to submit a proposal that was quite flexible and that indicated they were going to follow the lead of the industry that they needed. Another success factor was having people in the project with skills and attitudes that support collaboration. And some of these key skills and attitudes were understanding, learning and listening. As one of the people I interviewed highlighted, it was really important for people from the Ag Research side to have an inclusive and open attitude and a willingness to learn new things. And this was particularly because of the complexity of the program. There was interactions between Ag Research and industry, Ag Research and other research organisations, as well as work being done on farm with sheep and off farm in the lab. Another important um, attitude was a willingness to be flexible and adapt to changes. This was needed at the strategic level as some industry partners left the project and others joined, changing what research was happening and what could be done, as well as at the implementation level where there was a need to adapt with to what was happening on a farm in a particular season and year um, and be flexible in collecting samples. So there's some key learnings that have come out of this, um, the work I've done from on the MB Dairy Sheep program include that relationships and trust may need to be built with and among partners. As Linda indicated, there wasn't that experience of working together at the start. Work on commercial farms can be challenging. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Industry focused work may struggle to meet science expectations. And specialist skills and expertise may be needed for handling complexity and conflict. 
So work on commercial farms can be challenging. One of the interviewees put it quite well when they said, you're in the middle of someone's commercial operation. Someone who's trying to sell product and bring in money and having a good intention, but just not having either a good understanding of how rigid you have to be with scientific trials. On the other hand, not having the staff resources to assist with trials. So this kind of work involves some risk that needs to be, people need to be aware of. There's only certain things you can do, commercial operations. Um, and there's also a need for farm staff themselves to be aware of requirements. Um, it's not enough to just talk to managers about what needs to be done and get their agreement um, because it's the farm staff who will be doing the work usually. Another learning was that industry focused work may struggle to meet science expectations. One of the people I interviewed it, you said it this way, it's just really hard to achieve science stretch when you're working with an emerging industry because science stretch is so far away from what they actually need. And it was seen that having this focus on industry created some challenges when it came to writing up publications as the focus on those industry questions and getting them the information they needed didn't necessarily mean that the information that was needed for high level journal articles was also being collected. So it was more work to put those together. So in conclusion, just a couple of summaries from what we learned. There's a real need to have people with the right skills in this kind of project around communication, flexibility, and managing complexity and conflict. Additionally, it's essential to allow time to develop shared understandings and build relationships in a project like this with so many stakeholders. It's not just an optional extra for something that needs to have time and resources allocated to it. So that's all I have to share today. I'd like to open the floor to any questions and pass it back to Tessa to manage any of those questions. Thanks very much, Roxanne. That was great. Hey, um, I'd like to actually kick off if I could um, and ask for a little bit more uh, richness around an example. We understand that there's a whole lot of complexities when you're looking at co-innovation, but ultimately it results in a lot more buy-in um, from everybody. So I'd like it if you could perhaps expand a bit um, on some examples of where that actually was able to be sort of breathed life into. So, uh, oh, yeah. sorry, you go, Linda. <laughs> yeah, so I think a, a really good example there is um, to look at the work that we did around lamb rearing. Um, so this is about giving the the lambs the best the best start in life while still trying to get some milk to make product with. And what we did there is um, we worked individually with um, the three industry partners. And because their setup was quite different, we effectively came up with, and also they sort of had slightly different philosophies as well. Um, so we came up with three you know, individual solutions for the three of them, how to, conduct, how to do their lamb rearing so that it worked for them. So this was both a question about scale. You know, you can use a different system and if you have a smaller operation compared to a larger one, but also a little bit about this kind of, um, yeah, I guess the business philosophy that you have and the values you have, uh, they were, were also reflected. And because we s set it up and tried it on their farm, uh, it was, you know, they could directly see uh, what the benefits were and also where, where, where there was a lot more work involved than maybe they wanted. So the following year they could just they could tailor the system we had set up as a trial thing um, so that it really suited them um, in, in every way and that's yeah that was a really good good example. Great thanks very much. Look there is a question here. Um, I'm wondering whether or not, knowing what you know now, what is it that you do differently? You've got a great amount of hindsight now in a six year program that's been running. What, what would it be that you'd be doing differently? Well, um, I think uh, I'm, I'm actually leading a new MB program now, so I'm taking a lot of these learnings now. And 
the 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 number one thing is to just put in put in time take the time put the time in right at the start or even before you write the proposal to engage with your collaborators and your stakeholders get them on board right from the start um, because uh, yeah otherwise it's just going to take even more time <laughs> to get everyone on the same page so um that's um that's the learning that i'm that, that's the biggest learning i've taken from this program great thanks very much um there's one other roxanne um i'm wondering if you could describe what you think might be the biggest handbrake um, to co-innovation? Well, I guess it will depend on the different situations and the projects, but one thing that came through quite strongly in talking to people who'd been involved in the MB Dairy Sheep program was just that real importance of having good communication and relationships between people. If people know what's going on, um, if they are well informed if they've got buy-in, if you've got those shared understandings, then you can do a lot. If you don't have that, then it's really hard to move, move forward together. So I think that's probably the foundational thing to work on when you're working with multiple partners in a project. Um, can I add something there as well? Um, I think another thing to think about is the, what shall we call it, the, <laughs> the tension between industry need and, and science stretch. That can be a bit tricky. Um, it obviously, it depends on what industry partners you're working with. In this case, the, the industry was emerging and they didn't really need stretchy science. And in 2013, stretchy science was not the focus uh, for the funder either. Um, but I think, uh, you know they still keep keep that in mind that, that tension that science stretch is not always what the industry needs and and yeah so, so it's, it's just something to keep in mind i think point well made linda um thank you hey look we've got one more question here and i'm just uh, noting the time i'd like to just open to both of you um is there any further research that will happen as a result of this project and future collaboration between ag research and the industry or the sheep milk industry? Can you tell us a bit more about what your ongoing work on are in the dairy sheep industry? Oh yes, there's a, there's a whole heap going on there. Um, um, instead of having another <laughs> MB funded program, we have now we've got lots of different smaller projects, sometimes with multiple industry partners, sometimes just with one industry partners. And there's, there's a whole heap of work going on both on farm and off farm. And um, a really good example here is um, um, a human clinical trial comparing sheep milk versus cow milk that has just been published in Frontiers of Nutrition, which has been funded by, co-funded by two um, sheep milk producers and processors. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole heap of work going on. This this MB program was just really just the starting point and just providing a really awesome platform for further work. And um, also maybe to finish off, just because the program is finished does not mean that we have stopped running the Sheep Milk New Zealand conference. It will run again next year. <laughs> and I'll be nice. involved in that. <laughs> Excellent. Nice little bit of advertisement there. Hey, look, I'm noting the time and we're getting close to the finish. And I'm just wondering, we need to make sure that the people online actually have our contact details. I wonder if we can have the, the last slide up. Um, great, uh, thanks very much. Look, that uh, pretty much wraps up our seminar um, for today. Um, thanks to those of you that were able to join and it's a shame that we weren't able to join some of the others that were having technical difficulties. So, um, but nonetheless, there'll be a recording available um, at a later date. So thanks very much and please reach out to Roxanne Linder or Tessa if you've got any further questions. Very good. Matiwa.